Yeah, this is probably one of the craziest things that I've ever actually seen in the water. Oh, there's tension, tension, tension. Right. Why, how many? Oh, I don't know, maybe 20. These fillets are pristine and they've been on ice for quite a long time. G'day crew, my name is Luke from Aquatic Rehab Spearfishing and uh, welcome to the Spearfishing Vlog. Now this is a dive uh, out in the Hauraki Gulf and uh, we had quite a few interesting shark encounters and um, as a byproduct of that we encountered some like really bold snapper remember guys if you want to see us make more content hit like and subscribe um, that will give us the motivation to get in behind the camera and in behind the editing gear and um, get more content up so in this dive i met up with arjun and uh, my mate neil a bloke called mike who i'd never met before and uh, mike's son uh, tagged along with us and mike was uh, line fishing on the boat and the rest of us were um, spearing so yeah, pretty good crew, pretty chilled out. Pretty bad conditions out here. Those coeys are huge. Now the first spot uh, we thought we might get into some good kingies on. It was a bit quiet on the kingy front but we had really thick schools of kahiru hanging out right under where we had anchored. So we ended up getting into the kahiru for sashimi, which are a bloody good sashimi fish. So yeah, and it's always cool I reckon when you're seeing real thick schools of kahiru like that. Ended up getting back on the boat. Neil had actually scored himself a kingy, so um, that was pretty good. Just the one, yep. and he's already gutted and killed. Can you shoot it like that? Picked it up from the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I caught a car wine a guy's line the other day, and it was gutted. I just got a car wine, and uh, I just pulled the guts out of it, and I've got an unsuspecting fisherman up here, and I'm gonna throw the car wine on his line. Uh, see what it does. Yeah, yeah. And then I was just like jiggling the head of it, and then I went up the side of the side of the boat and pulled it in. After that we moved on to another spot and um, there's a bit of a cave on the spot that I'd known about that can hold some good fish. Um, ended up going down there and having a look in and um, managed to find quite a nice sized trevally in the cave. I seen this kingy sort of racing over the top of the reef when I was landing the Trevally and um, I don't know what the heck was going on but I got told uh, afterwards that one of the boys had sort of winged one and uh, had gotten off so that sort of explained it. That's a good size one man. Yeah. Look at that. So what's in it? Is it, is it just um, a mixture of, um, what is it, tequila, tequila sunrise and um, yeah, Malibu. Crushed up party pools. <laughs> it sort of uh, quieted down a bit and uh, we decided to move 
and um, check some, some more sort of rocky, outcroppy type reef country. Blokes are porcupine fish. So started having a bit of a snoop about the show. Uh, found one fish lurking on this little sort of outcrop type point and um, had to take a bit of a long shot. And then after landing that one, uh, found another fish out in some um, dirtier water. It's quite weird that bit of reef because there's sort of quite nice water on one side and then um, out on the other side there it sort of um, must be a bit of a, a current or something and it, it picks up a bit of shitty water. But um, yeah, picked up one fish there. And then after that, um, sort of came down a bit too far over the sledge and then I uh, looked up to my side and um, there was two snapper parked up that I'd sort of gone past. Um, yeah, and I ended up turning towards them and then obviously um, spooked them out of there at 100 mile an hour. Mike, who was on the boat fishing, requested a bit of bait. So I caught up with Neil, just shot a drummer to bring back to Mike and um, man, like I shot it. Uh, turned the GoPro off on the on the surface, which I wish I didn't do, and uh, had this bronzy. It's actually this one here that I photographed um, um, about an hour later. Yeah, basically having the shark come right in, and I was icking the drummer. I was thinking the shark's going to turn. He's going to turn away, and and I've got Neil here with his gun. Didn't turn. Came right in and in to pull the knife out of its head and just push it, and the shark was literally right there. And Neil came over my right shoulder with his gun and ended up bending his spear, trying to push it away from me. Um, the shark literally just grabbed the drummer right in front of me. As it grabbed it and moved away a bit, I got the camera on after I'd sort of started untangling any line that might have been around myself, because I had real line and stuff everywhere. He ended up snapping my Dyneema in his teeth and um, taking my spear. So the shark was getting pretty frisky after that, um, that drummer experience. I didn't have the GoPro on for that mean bit. Oh, when it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like Did you have it? No. Uh, I did. Yeah, we're gonna guard my snapper. He's just taking my spear. I'll go and look over there because the spear might have landed on the reef. He loves you. You're angry that one. Yeah. Once he'd calmed down a bit, ended up um, going over and getting my spear back out of the reef. Um, ended up just re-rigging it. Uh, normally just um, rig my spears up with um, my real Dyneema and, and do a bowline um, just to avoid any drama with mono and having to recrimp and stuff like that. It's always a lot easier. And then I actually had the two snappers still on my float line but there was a big nest of um, a tangled up float line and the shark didn't really like it. So I think that nest sort of put him off taking my snapper. So anyway I thought oh, I'm going to boat my snapper before I lose them and uh, yeah ended up getting them on the boat and uh, on ice. Meet. Get the big camera in and try to film these bronzies. And then uh, the plan was to get the big camera and see if I can get some photographs and some video of these um, bronzies. Because um, when I was getting my spear back, I actually did see uh, another shark in there as well. So me and Neil are gonna head back over and see if we can get some footage. So yeah, basically uh, went back to the spot and um, that drummer getting throttled must have um, brought a few snapper in. So I went for a bit of a dive down this ledge here and um, was seeing quite a few good fish sort of dotted around. And uh, that was pretty cool. So I knew that that was a spot that um, 
you know, would produce a, a cool bit of footage if we sort of hung around there. And then, um, yeah, when I was down on the ledge, um, the, the big bronzy sort of showed itself again. And they've been a bit timid and weird. And then they one nice dive and one actually just come really close to me. And another one's doing barrel rolls with a big bloody rope in its mouth. Like a hook in its mouth. So after that Neil shot a blue mau mau and um, yeah, he threw it out over that ledge towards the sharks. And it actually sort of ended up sinking, like the two halves of it sinking down into this crack. And uh, yeah, those snapper just ended up moving in like a pack of dogs. <laughs> And um, I couldn't help myself. As I was landing it, a big kingy, a couple of kingies, but one of them was quite big, probably over 25 kilo, um, came up just to have a look at the snapper and then uh, cruised away. So we were just starting to get quite blown away by this point, by all the wildlife, you know. Big snapper, dopey ass, just cruising around, following the sharks around. Um, obviously the sharks themselves and then uh, big kingfish coming through. After that, had another dive and um, had the shark uh, with a big rope hanging out of its mouth come right over the top of my head. And then uh, yet yeah, came past and um, there was just snapper everywhere. Um, I have to stress as I do uh, in these kind of videos that this is not normal behavior. This is uh, behavior that you generally see around sharks. These are sort of pilot snapper. Um, when they're not around sharks it's just it's it's almost two different species it's just the, the the way that they're acting is just is drunken really but it's very cool to film yeah neil shot another mau mau yeah basically had a bit of a muck around with this shark here i got managed to get some cool photos and, and a bit of video and stuff which is cool Um, yeah, he dropped this blue mau mau like directly below us, not even over a ledge, just in about three or four meters of water, um, kind of in the in the little plateau that we were just hovering over. And um, a huge blue mau mau school had sort of moved in. And um, yeah, this is probably one of the craziest things that I've ever actually seen in the water. I dived down into the blue mau mau right below us, so you know, like one one and a half, two stories. So Neil's right there, and um, this shark was here in the blue mau mau. The blues are too thick to see it, but the snapper are just all through it. They've been following that shark. And um, they weren't there previously. They're obviously coming up with the shark and then leaving with the shark. And I had one snapper that I remember poking. I can't stress enough. This is like literally right below Neil's feet. You know, he's sort of um, just above me here. And um, the snapper are just obviously in amongst the chaos. Probably the blue mau mau that's concealing me. There's just so much going on that they're just not looking through it at me. And um, they, they make the sharks there and he's another big shape. So as a snapper sort of cruised up this gut, did a UN come back down? I was like, I'm taking the shot because I don't know how many of these I'm gonna get given um, opportunities like this to get on film. Like sort of that six to seven kilo mark, uh, you know, bloody good eating fish. Uh, the only crap thing was the camera was angled down just a wee bit. Uh, but you know, you basically get the idea.
Bro, I touched one with the spear tip. Okay, I touched it. Up. I keep saying it. Sharks make snapper fucking dumb. We just barely up two blue mount mouths just to get some more footage and photos of the shark. The shark came in and like five things were following it. I just touched one with a spear tip like a good snapper. I just shot another one. Super close, super shallow. Just inside the blue mount. Cool. Um, we ended up doing another sort of um, five drops and just hanging out and um, there, yeah, just a pretty wicked sight and a pretty epic dive. So after that the boys had rolled up on the boat and um, I was like saying you know get in and, and have a look at this stuff and uh, basically they can't because they um, they can't anchor up because they'd lost the anchor on some quite deep ground so um, that was a bit shit, you know, quite a nice anchor on that boat too. Gutted the snapper, took him home and then uh, there's a, a technique where if you can't be bothered filleting in, in the night, you come back too late or whatever, um, you can actually um, stack the fish upright on salt ice and um, what I do is um, put a bit of wood under the back of the chili bin and, and let the moisture drain out so they're not sitting in pooling water. Um, here's the technique here and a bit of uh, a showcase of the quality of the, the meat. I've got home, it's pretty late. And I can't be bothered filleting tonight, so what I'm going to do is stack the fish in my chili bin with salt ice. I'll show you how I do that, and that means they'll be nice and tacky for me to fill it tomorrow, which would be mean. Provided they don't sit in any uh, low fluid. Really, a snap here and a couple of coeys and a king wing. So, what I'm doing is just stacking them up so that they can drain nicely. Coeys on the outside there, get them nice and upright. Put the king at the back there. Come out in the morning and have a big building session. Sweet, I'm gonna bed. Now they've been on ice overnight from last night and they've been stacked and obviously gutted and um, they're raised so I've got a bit of wood under there so the water's draining so they can't sit in any pooling water. Um, I've just filled up one snapper and the meat is perfect. Tacky, still got a bit of colour in it, really firm, and um, yeah. So I'm going to crack on and uh, do the rest of it. Put it all in this uh, box here, and then um, I'll vacuum pack all of it and uh, label it, and then we've got more snapper to churn through. So stoked as. I hope you guys like this video, and uh, if you want to see me make more of these kind of um, videos, guys, remember like and subscribe. Um, go over and support us on Patreon. You get any of our YouTube videos for three days early on there. Yeah, it just helps us to do what we're doing, especially through these times where um, you know we're all um, sort of quarantined and, and, and shit sort of changing. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.